Good evening, YouTube world. Paul Italia here. If you haven't already, please click that subscribe button. Um, it is uh, my pleasure tonight to introduce uh, one of the best arm wrestlers ever to live. Very big legend in our sport, Ron Beth. Welcome, Ron. Hey, appreciate being here, Paul. Thanks for inviting me. Well, yeah. thank you for being on, brother. It is a pleasure to be able to interview your age and uh, your walk around weight right now. Uh, I'm an old man. No, no, I just turned 60 when I was over in uh, Turkey and Greece. I turned 60 and walk around uh, right around the 245 ish mark. Some days a little bit lighter, some days a little heavier. Uh, mostly 242 to 245. Yeah, so I, I wanted to bring up that uh, you were just in Turkey. We uh, we seen you had uh, two big matches over there and uh. Actually, one of them was uh, probably the best uh, match I've seen in uh, the two years of my arm wrestling. What a war you had with uh, Zurup from uh, Georgia. Can you tell <laughs> us a little about that war, brother? <laughs> it was a war. Uh, initially, when, when I, you know, like any time, when you think you're pulling somebody smaller than you, you think, oh, well, and he's younger. So I, I really had no clue that was coming until I saw the man and saw his arms. And then I started watching some videos of him, and I knew, I knew he was legit. But, and, you know, I just brought the fight that day. So did he, neither one wanted to lose. And uh, truthfully, I don't think either one did lose. Uh, it, he, he, had, he had so much side pressure and so much arm on that, that body of his. It's amazing. It's awesome. It was fun. Yeah, that was uh, definitely a battle for the ages and a very impressive performance by yourself, bro. Thanks. Fortunately, I managed to get a couple of wins early and then, uh, Thought I had round three, but I uh, got called for a little elbow pop when I was starting to come up on it, and then it sort of went downhill from there. So, yeah, I saw that. I'd uh, I'd actually love to see a rematch in the future of that. That would be a great one to run back. Yeah, it's been mentioned a couple of times. Um, that would have to be up to promoters and Zero. Um, you know, he's a young man. He's got a lot of things to chase more than uh, um, chasing old men. Um, so, but, you know, I'm sure the right promoter wanted it and, uh, managed to put it together. We'd have it again. Uh, I'd probably be coming in with even a better mindset. So. Yeah. And Ron, yeah. please don't say that old man anymore because bro, you are a legend brother. And, uh, there is nothing old about you, bro. <laughs> I gotta come up with excuses, man. Uh, I'm starting to build them. I'm building them already for this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I just wanted to start off, and uh, I just wanted to find out, where did you uh, grow up? I grew up in northern part of Wisconsin, a small town called Wabino. Um, and I lived there until 23, and then I moved down here to Georgia. Nice. So, and uh, when you uh, were growing up in uh, high school and all, did you uh, play any sports? Yeah, I, was, I really wasn't very athletic, but I played some basketball a little bit. Um, until my senior year when he told uh, three of us, we had an almost all senior team. He told three of us, the two juniors were going to play ahead of us. I said, I had other things to do. So I walked, um, football, I did pretty good, especially my senior year. I, uh, you know, got defensive player of the year that year, but, uh, never thought about going to college, but it was never really pushing our family. So I went right on to become a, a working man. Um, but yeah, I played some sports and probably in my high school years when I actually started arm wrestling a little bit, but I had no idea it would go to where it is today. And yeah, that was uh, my next question. Um, when and uh, how did you find arm wrestling? Uh, arm wrestling found me. Um, well, basically, you know, everybody arm wrestles when you're, you know, small town, you're always arm wrestling somebody. But uh, um, I remember... I believe it was June, my junior year or something. I forget what the whole thing was, but we had some arm wrestling in our fired class. And I don't know if the coach had seen it on TV or what it was. So we had it and I actually won it. And then uh, right after my senior year of high school, there was a local tournament. And I was 18 years old and I went there and there's maybe three of us in that whole class. 
but the other ones were, you know, legit adults. And I, I won it at 18 years old. And from there on, I was pretty much hooked. But I never, at, even at that time, I didn't have the wherewithal that the sport was as big as it was. So, so um, at 18 years old, at that first tournament, um, was that your first official time on an arm wrestling table? Yeah. Yeah. It's the first time I ever saw one. And uh, what was your uh, weight class that you competed in that day? I would have had to been around. I was about 200 pounds when I graduated. So I'm not sure what the weight classes were by that organization or what it was, but it probably would have been around 200 pounds. So um, I wanted to find out, um, was there, um, after that, that got you hooked and all. So when did you uh, join a team or how did the practicing start? Like, how did that all begin for you? Oh, man. Um, practicing really didn't, there was no real team organization. I didn't know of any team. I knew of the promoter up there. So I talked to him, but he still was a good distance away. And I think I took a rubber strap or a bike tube and tied it to a post and just practice a little bit because my promoter went down, I think I was 19, went down to Chicago. And that's when I actually first met the likes of Johnny, saw Johnny Walker, uh, met John Brzezink's dad. I'm not sure how old I was when I pulled John Brzezink's dad uh, left-handed and I beat him. I think I might've been 20. Um, but that's one just because of the name and hearing John and I knew and I heard stories that I had beaten him. Um, but I remember the first I saw Johnny Walker when I was 15 on Wide World of Sports. And even though I still never it never all clicked, nothing clicked in there because, you know, just simple country boy. But um, I saw it and I was just amazed at watching this and watching Johnny's uh, story. And then the five years no, that would have been. Eight years later, I was living in Johnny's backyard going to practices at Johnny's house because when I moved to Georgia, um, you know, like go back to your question on practices up there in Wisconsin, really didn't have any. We just went to tournaments um, here and there. The promoter by uh, snail mail, we would get a list of where his tournaments were and you'd go or not go. Um, So, you know, I'd go to a few of them. and I did pretty good. Most of the time I won. Um, sadly, I think the only match I lost was against and, uh, in recognition of him was a guy by the name of Pat Switlick, a young man. And, uh, after he beat me at state about, it was a short time later, he died in a car wreck, um, which God rest his family ever hears that. Yeah. I always think of him. It's amazing how certain people you can remember after 40, 50 years. Um, but, uh, but then I moved to Georgia in, uh, 85. And I went to a little tournament up in North Georgia up here. And I thought, well, I'm just going to go show them all how to do it. Well, all of a sudden the guy gets on the announcer and he says, we have five world champions here. Well, Burt Whitfield, Johnny Walker, and he listed off a few. And that's when I really got to meet the likes of Burt Whitfield and Johnny. And then uh, we started actually going to practice because Burt, the way they drew that tournament, they would pick up brackets. And then like the likes of Bert and a few of them would go up into a top room and make the brackets out. And they asked, he said, who knows this Ron Bath guy? And somebody said, I don't know. None of us know him. He's a pretty big farm boy looking guy. And Bert goes, well, I'll take him. Well, Bert weighed like 175, 180 pounds. So Bert gets me and Bert just locks in the middle and we're, we're in a war. And uh, I'm looking at my family and my friends who come up there to watch me kick everybody's ass. And here this little guy's just, he's holding me. Finally, I beat him. I get a win. But then after that, Dave Randall saw me and he he had all the respect in the world for me. Then he flashed me. I lost my next two matches because they it woke him up that don't mess with him. And then I went to Bert's house and Bert probably beat me the next 50 times in practice just to show me that he was the man um, that he just he let me get what I wanted in the tournament. It proved wrong. But then he and Bert became my mentor and taught me more than I'll ever, ever know. And uh, that's probably the reason reason I got to where I was because of Burt Whitfield. Wow, that is an amazing story. Yeah, I was going to just ask you about uh, who mentored you or who uh, inspired you in arm wrestling, and uh, now we know who that is. Yeah, definitely. Let me ask you, Ron, where do you uh, think you got this um, natural power from? Uh, was it something you do? Uh, you said you worked on a farm. Is, is that where you, you developed that uh, natural power from the beginning? 
farm life was just a hobby farm we had, but we had neighbors who had farms. My dad owned a small construction company and then it was a logging community. So from a young kid, I was working in the summers and my dad's construction was, which was masonry. So I was carrying block a lot. We had cow, we had cattle. So, you know, we didn't have running water to the barn. So you'd have to carry water from the house outdoor faucet to the barn. So, you know, every night you're carrying 20. So the, everything I did as a young man involved my hand, my wrist and my arms. And then I took, I was a logger for a few years before I moved to Georgia. So it was chainsaw. Um, so naturally I developed all the muscles needed for arm wrestling back in that day because it wasn't as technical. It was mostly still a strong man sport. You know, they were developing top roll and stuff, but um, it was easy to get good with just being naturally strong. Um, so basically just from growing up. Did you, uh, did you lift weights at all or you didn't have to cause you, what you were doing every day was the same. Nah, I didn't lift weights much. Um, you know, I dabbled with it here or there. It got boring. Even after I started training in Georgia, because uh, when I moved down here, we did concrete work and then we got into this uh, retaining wall business. So when I was in my upper twenties and thirties, I was laying hundred pound block all day. Um, so I really didn't have to go to the gym much, um, which it's a pro and a con and I'll, I can go in all that because I didn't have to work out. It, it was my natural day. So I'd go to practice once a week and we'd train for three to four hours. You're, you were toast when you got done. But then as I, I started my own business and then now I'm project manager, so I don't lift the block anymore. I don't do all the physical I drive. And I know the last probably 15 or so years, my wrist and my hand uh, are a lot easier to take than they used to be. Um, so I've actually, because Angie loves working her hand, wrist and forearm, actually got me motivated in to start working my weaknesses a little bit more. Um, but it's still, lift, lifting weights is fun. I love going to stay in shape, but as far as training hard for arm wrestling, uh, not, not 100%. Let me ask you, when was um, the transition? When did you get 100% serious with arm wrestling? When did you say, all right, I'm going all in. I'm going to start training on the table all the time. When did that happen? What age was that at? Yeah, I'm going to floor you with the answer. Never. Oh, my God. Wow. That is so you just you, you got it naturally from uh, from all the work you've did and everything. Like it, wow. It just, you know, not saying I don't train and all that, but to have the passion where like today a lot of the top guys today have to almost train seven days a week to keep at that top level you know i can stay competitive but i would really have to kick in the training to try to move up a ladder of any kind um it's just something that's naturally been good with me and i learned it over a long period of time and you do develop a lot of good tendon strength um but as far as being die hard i'm going at it i might have had spurts of maybe four five six weeks and then uh, I got other things to do over 40, 42 years of doing this. You can't stay hard at it all the time. Um, but like I said, I think Angie might be the only one who realizes how little I really put in the arm wrestling compared to what people would think I do. It's not that I don't put anything into it. It's just, it's just been natural. I don't have to put a great deal. It's either that or my life is just styled so much around arm wrestling. Everything I do is for arm wrestling. I don't even realize it. So let me ask you, Ron. So uh, when you were training for East versus West, uh, your, your recent matches against uh, FAE and uh, Zurup, what is your training look like a week? Can you give me an example of what you do? That was probably a little more stringent. Uh, I'd actually, the sad part with that is a lot of the clubs around here sort of died off over the last six, eight months as far as training. So I didn't really get to get on a table. So I'd get on my table here with the straps and the thick grip and just work a lot of wrists and a lot of side pressure, um, which uh, for Effie, it didn't do any good. Effie, I would have probably needed table time uh, to improve that game because my left is, it's just not, it's str as strong as my right, but it's not as functionally mentally as my right. And that's why he just peeled me out real quick. I needed table time to get that muscle memory down. Okay. Uh, my right, I did basically the same. I'd, I'd simulate at the table and just hit with the strap, um, throw weights, stuff like that, just to try to stay strong. Um, but I really wish I would have been able to have the same table time this last 
um, December to January that I had last year. For some reason, last year, even though COVID was hot, Angie was down here. She got down here in September and stayed nine months. From the time she got here, and it wasn't because she was here, it just seemed like we were either at a practice somewhere or at a tournament somewhere for like six months. We were just steady arm wrestling. And this year, it just seemed like it fizzled off, like there wasn't the same amount of adrenaline. Um, like Paul Passamore sort of slowed his practices down. Uh, this Josh Ellington used to have one, but he's got real busy with his own business. So he slowed his, and I sort of lost a lot of that table time because I no longer run a club. I, I just gave it up, but I'll go to other people's practices. And so the table times, what really would have helped me probably at Turkey, but I think I was in plenty good shape. I was in good shape. It just wasn't the table time I, I thought I wanted. So uh, I also wanted to congratulate you. You brought up Angie Rose on uh, your recent engagement. You did Thanks. that right, brother. Uh, I saw you proposing in Greece. That was really, really perfect move. <laughs> yeah. Now, and, we, we've talked quite a bit about what we wanted down the road. So when I got the invite to go there and Mike and, you know, Angie, want, she's been to Greece before. and She always wanted to go to Greece with me. So when Mike and uh, Rebecca said they were going to go, I said, hey, we're going to go too. And I couldn't pass up that opportunity, Greece, and uh, tell someone how much you love them. And that, that is amazing. And uh, the other thing that I love is uh, what a power couple you guys are. I mean, you know, we get the both of you guys on the East versus West card. Uh, Angie's kicking some ass out there. So um, does that relationship, does that help you with uh, arm wrestling and, and training? Do you guys push each other? Is, is that what goes on? I can't wait for her to come back down here, which all goes well. She should be back down here in about two, two and a half weeks. Um, yeah, because it, it's because – you know how everybody, it's hard to go to the gym after a day, but either one of us will always want to go. So then it pushes the other one to go. And then when we get to the gym, I think you probably can relate, is you'll start off real slow because you don't feel like it. But then by the time you get your endorphins up, and she's worse than I am. It's like, Ange, I'm ready to go. Nope, one more set, one more set. So she, drives, she is actually the pusher in the long workout when she's here. That's amazing to hear because uh, now we know that you guys are uh, getting married and all, so we could expect Ron to even be stepping up his uh, game even more and start pulling even higher level because uh, Angie's going to be pushing you now. You got the boss in, in town. <laughs> we'll have to see. Some of these young guys are getting pretty mean and nasty.